Oh my God, guys, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic outside and I'm parenting. Jesus! Ooh, I know this is a trying time for you. This is a trying time for me. But, you know, Cozy Moon Podcast has to still push through. I've been pushing through for the past, I want to say, four months. Um, This has not been the summer of my life. I did not enjoy this summer. Um, If you want to call it that, um, I'm not enjoying, you know, scanning in homework and emailing it to teachers. I'm not enjoying that. Class Duo is on Pivot. Uh, Google Classroom is on Pivot. Uh, Alerts is coming on my phone. I'm always checking the news. I don't know what's going on. This election is going to be wild. It's just a wild time. And I just want you guys to know that I am here with you. Thank you for tuning back into Cozy Moon Podcast for Season 9. Can we clap for Season 9? Yes. Um, It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. I'm being really transparent this season and um, sharing a lot of my life with you. Sharing a lot of things that people are not thinking about during this um, pandemic and this quarantine. And I just really want us to be better human beings throughout this whole pandemic because that's what we need all right so i hope you guys enjoy the episodes this season Woo! let's just get into it there's so much to talk about i mean let me start with these kids. I mean, oh, oh these kids let's just get into this hey parents and soon to be parents welcome to cozy one podcast my name is shan mama of the girls um i have a good episode that i haven't heard a lot uh, being talked about in discussions, podcasters, parents, um, and I've, I've had my own experience with this particular issue, and I've had friends that have dealt with their own experience with this issue, becoming new parents, and I wanted to talk about post-baby daddy therapy. Okay, now this goes for soon to be fathers, um, fathers on a second go around, fathers on a third go around, um, soon to be fathers, dads, um, anyone taking on raising a new a new child into their life. The transition from soon to be dad to a father is very delicate in the sense of. Men go through many emotions that no matter how many kids they have, um, it could be a hard time preparing for a new kid or a new baby or another life. We see on the news fathers killing families and themselves, threatening mothers of their children and ruining relationships over not being able to process the fact that they are going to become a father. And nobody talks about a father's transition from hearing, hey, I'm pregnant from a woman to going through those nine to 10 months and actually physically, mentally, emotionally, financially taking on the responsibility of being that father. And a lot has to do with it because Men physically do not become fathers until that baby is out that mother and in their hands. A woman physically becomes a mother when she conceives, she pees on that stick, she confirms it at a doctor's appointment, and she goes through those months of development and changes in her body with that baby. So it's more instant for a woman to become a mother or a parent where with a father it has a lot to do with that father and that mother's relationship to begin with during the process of the pregnancy the closeness the chemistry the communication has a lot to do with it in that delivery room was that father a part of that delivery of that baby that labor yes or no like that has a lot to do with it and I really want to talk and dissect things that men, fathers, dads 
should really be digging in deep within themselves to process the fact that you are now a father or you went from soon to be father, possible father to this is your baby. This is your son. This is your daughter. This is your legacy. What are you going to do? That's what I want to talk about. So get comfortable. I am a woman, I am a mother, I am a sister, an auntie, and a daughter, okay? I'm also a cousin of many. I have two kids and both of their dads had a difficult transition becoming okay with the fact that they were going to be a father to a child I was carrying. They were going to be a father for the first time or they were going to be a father for the second time. When men, males become fathers or get the notice that they will become fathers, think about that. A man cannot have a child, but he can help create one. But in the process of you, someone telling you, you are going to be a mother, but you're not physically going through changes. Your body's not going through changes and you don't feel a child growing. But someone is telling you, hey, in X amount of months, you are going to be this, this person. This, this, this is going to be attached to who you are forever. Okay, there is no divorce in being a mother or a father. There is no, I was a mother or father and now I'm not. There is, you, you've you had a child, you had a child, You your child is here, okay? And if someone was able to tell me, hey, you're going to be a mother and I wasn't going through those changes, it would be hard for me to come to grips with that unless... I was taught unless I was shown, unless I had experienced lifestyle examples of what being a mother is. And I was ready mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially. And to be honest, nobody is logically always financially ready for a child, okay? You never know if your child is going to come out special needs and need more money than you thought, more attention than you thought. You'll never know if your child is going to come out with um, not enough valves on their heart or their body's not, um, you know, done forming all the way or they can't see or they're blind or they can't hear. You don't know. It's a very scary process to create a child, carry a child, and give birth to a child, and the odds of your child coming out 100% healthy and you coming out 100% healthy, is, is a, it's a gamble, okay? But to be in the mind frame that now I have to make my mind understand that I have to prepare for a child to be here, that I have no recollection of of like having like my body's not going through any changes I have to tell myself you need to make sure you're making enough money to provide for yourself this child's mother and this child in your home you need to make sure you're making enough money to have whole life uh insurance for this child you need to make sure you're having enough benefits where you can set aside time for this child you need to make sure that your schedule will now be efficient to support this woman and this child, no matter if it's just someone you're dating, your girlfriend, your fiance, your wife, your ex. You need you had the responsibility of having sex to prevent a child. Now a child is coming. Let me prepare for that. So there's a process, there's a mind frame that goes into doing that and a lot of men don't know how to process all those thoughts now think about if you were a man that was already struggling with alcoholism already struggling with drug use already struggling with gambling already in a hole you don't have somewhere to call your own you've been looking for a job you don't have a job so all those pressures 
Imagine you being a black man and wondering if the law, a police officer, someone in your environment, someone in your hood, someone that really hates you and had it out for you is going to kill you before your child gets here and you get to meet your child. So there's a lot of different pressures that come with a father going from soon to be possibly to being a father. So there's a lot that they go ahead and they have to process. And I'm not a woman that's going to downplay that. Oh, that's nothing. You don't have to go through labor, your body. No, it's a different type of pressure, but it's pressure. Women have their own pressures becoming mothers and men have their own pressures becoming fathers. Okay. I feel like your body going through a change and you physically seeing a change in yourself and you are hearing things and you're seeing your body and your baby moving inside you is way easier than trying to mentally come to grips with, I'm going to be responsible for a whole human being that I haven't seen yet, I haven't felt, and I don't, I don't feel different being that this woman told me I was going to be a father. Like there's a difference there and I do... um have compassion for males and men who are soon to be fathers, especially males and men that did not have a father growing up in a household, especially males and men who seen how their mothers treated their fathers or seen how their mothers treated men. And now I have to come to grips with, I don't want to be my dad because my mom hated my dad and she never respected my dad and my dad never did this and my dad never helped me and my dad never showed up and my dad never showed me that he cared and my dad never loved me. My dad never told me that he loved me. I don't know what my dad looks like. I don't know my dad's family and I don't know how to tell my child that I love them and I don't know how to show a possible son affection because nobody showed me affection in a way that people tell me dads are supposed to show affection. So there's a lot that men go through in the process of becoming fathers. And that's, that's just my opinion, okay? And I can honestly say that, Anya, stop, because I can't hear myself. I can honestly say that, you know, if I didn't see a healthy example of a father or had some sense of a healthy example of a father, it would be very difficult for me to process what type of father I'm going to be and how I'm going to do that, okay? So with, with the fact on top of that, that a man and a male has to process that is no longer about you and that woman, now is more than that you know it's 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 lifetime now because you're talking about a whole life that is going to be more than them now like I'm not only going to wake up and have to think about myself I'm going to have to wake up and think about someone who is a part of me forever that's a lot to take in women start that process at the peeing of the stick okay for men, it just sounds like a thing or event that's being planned but hasn't happened yet. Because let's be honest, some women do become pregnant and they can't carry that baby to full term. Uh, different medical uh, issues happen um, where the baby cannot be carried to full term. That's why for men, I hope you're listening, you are not supposed to share, speak of, or um, announce that you are expecting until a mother has reached at least 13 to 14 weeks, okay? Um, it's a very sensitive time. Uh, a lot of different things can happen where she may once be pregnant and lose lose the baby you just don't, never know it's a delicate time so that's why women say not to share that information one of my kids fathers shared that information super early um by the grace of god i had a healthy pregnancy i had two healthy pregnancies 
um, two healthy babies, two late babies, but two healthy late baby girls and um, they're beautiful and I love them, but it's just a very delicate situation. So um, through my thinking, uh, I created some questions that may help men through the processing of going from soon to be father, possible father to being a father and the work they should be doing through those months along with preparing with that mother for that child. Because I feel like if the questions that I'm going to go over, a man asks himself throughout the process before a baby gets here, he's going to be better off. He's going to be more prepared. There's going to be less drama. There's going to be less friction. Okay. There's going to be more understanding, more compassion, and more space for learning if the work is done before the child gets here. So these are some questions that men need help with, with processing the fact that they will be a father. Okay. So if I was a man, I would ask myself, what a dad is, in my opinion, because everybody's opinion of what a father is, is very different. The second question I would ask myself is what a dad means for me and my life. So me seeing myself be a father, what does that look like? What does that sound like? Financially, what do I expect from myself? before I allow other people to set expectations. That's very important, okay? And this is something that once you find the answers in yourself, you should be able to discuss with that child's mother, okay? The third question is, what does this mom expect from me? And that's something that you need to honestly have a discussion with that mother, okay? Again, every mother of a child is different. Every mother of a child is different. The expectations may be different. And this is where you honestly share with that mother if you feel like you can do these things that she's expecting. And if you cannot do it, see if there's a process or something you can do to either meet her halfway with her expectations. The fourth question is, where do I start? And where do I start can mean... Um, you need pamphlets, you need, uh, to find a mentor, you need to find a father, friend, family friend, um, your dad, your grandfather, your uncle that you respect and ask them about fatherhood. Um, the fifth question could be, how do I support the mom? I feel like a lot of fathers struggle with figuring out ways to support the mom. Maybe that could be getting her her uh, pregnancy snacks. Maybe that could be coming over and rubbing her feet. Maybe that can be before you leave out, always asking her if she needs something or if you could do something or running errands or taking a toddler that she has already out so she can have some time to rest or take a break or even pampering her, allowing her to go get her nails done, massages, um, taking her to her doctor's appointment offering to take her to her doctor's appointment instead of her having to ask you or beg you or continuously remind you. Um, It can also be you uh, helping her with, you know, how are you feeling today? Is there anything that I can do for you? Like it's simple things. And when you have a great relationship with your child's mother or soon to be your child's mother, it's easier to do. But when you have a relationship where there's drama and friction, I understand that that process can be very hard, okay? But again, men, males, you have to dig deep in yourself and remind yourself that it's not about me. It's not about me. Because stress, stress on a mother can interfere with the life of a child. Let me say that one more time. Stress on a mother can interfere with the life of a child. Stress on a mother during pregnancy can create a child that comes out probably healthy, but emotionally 
they very cranky. They're very um, whiny. They're fussy. Okay? All of that goes into a child. So if you don't prepare the process of a mother having a healthy, stress-free pregnancy, you're going to disturb the peace of your child. That happened to one of my children. My first child, she's very happy, very sweet, very quiet, very calm, always a happy baby, okay? The first couple of weeks I had her, you didn't even know there was a newborn in the house, okay? My second child, complete chaos, complete opposite. She was whiny, she was clingy, she was loud, I had sleepless nights, I, I had postpartum for the whole first year of her life because I went from having a child that was very easy, calm, and happy to having a child that was very miserable, uh, cranky, um, fussy, hard to please. Um, yeah, it was, it was hard. So please limit the stress, okay? Um... The sixth question you should ask yourself as a soon-to-be father is, does this mean my life plans don't matter? Having a child as a soon-to-be father does not mean that your life plans don't matter. It means now that your plans must include a child. So, if you had plans on going on tour for two years, that's out. You have to find another creative way for you to go on tour for whatever you're going on tour for, okay? If you had plans to travel the world um, for whatever or go to a different country and live there for a few years, that's out unless that mother is agreeing on coming with you while you raise that child. Um, You have to go through transitions with that mother Fairly, okay? A mother doesn't want to be within a pregnancy automatically knowing that she's going to be doing this whole thing by herself, okay? That's a lot of stress. Um, Don't put that on her. So find a way that you're involved and it's fair um, on raising a child within your life plan. Sometimes you're going to have to shift your life plans, okay? I had to shift my life plans um, becoming a mother because I had friends that put career before their children, before the idea of them having children and put career before the ideas of them having this, um, relationship in their head with someone in order to have a child. Right. And people do it every day. It's not crazy. It's not abnormal. People do it every day. And I understand why they do it. But on the other hand, with women, it is very rare that a woman can be in her late 30s or her 40s and have a healthy child or be able to conceive um, with the possibility of it being a healthy pregnancy, right? So my decision was that I didn't want to be a prisoner to a career that did not that sort of fulfilled me, but I felt like I was missing things in my life that were of more importance. Like, it's one thing to die and be like, oh, she had a great career. You know, she was great in this and not have a legacy to leave or um, parts of you to leave on this earth if you go. I, I would rather have a family and experience being a mother over me being so engulfed in having this status quo career. And that is a decision I picked. Everybody can pick their own path. But once a child is involved, you must include that child now. It's not, okay, you decided to be a mom, so this is on you. No, it's not that. It's not that, okay? That's a whole nother discussion that I want to have. But it's not that. It's a two-way street, okay? A man, once you allow yourself to be in a position to possibly allow a woman to conceive a child, 
that is also your responsibility too, okay? Now, the next question, um, what number am I on? Number seven. The seventh question that I would ask myself is, what child slash father trauma will becoming a father do to this child that I'm bringing into this world? When I say that, I mean, what was your relationship with your dad like? What trauma did you experience with your dad not being there or your dad being there and not being um, emotionally there, uh, physically uh, affectionate, um, spiritually, he didn't give you anything. Maybe your father was abusive, like, Have you dealt with that trauma? Have you dealt with that um, insecurity of not being able to be better than what your father was? I think that is very important for males and men to deal with before a child comes into their life physically um, because you don't want trauma that you didn't deal with to show up in a relationship with a child that doesn't know why you're acting like this why you're um, feeling like this and why you can't connect to a child that's that's a part of you you don't want that to show up so take care of that before a child gets here um number eight what does this mean for my relationship with my child's mother now for those of you males and men who are out here looking for a good time and you don't have any problems with one night stands and you don't mind um, liking a girl, seeing a girl, but it's very surfacey. You don't really want to hang out with her if it's not about sex. Um, you don't really want to, you know, understand what she wants out of life or understand what she likes to do. You don't want to meet her family. You don't care about her too much. Why are you allowing yourself to be in a position to possibly make a baby with her? We have to stop that. That is mentally, physically, emotionally deconstructive to life. Okay? There's a lot of babies that are out here because both parents were irresponsible and they really didn't want a child, but they were irresponsible with their bodies in the process of doing things that can create life. Okay? If you have a great relationship with your girlfriend or your fiance or your wife and you bring about life, you still need to dig deep and do your work, okay? You still need to find out what type of parents do we want to be? What type of wife do I want to be? What is it going to look like when I'm a wife, I'm a new wife, and I have a new husband and we have a kid? How do I balance spending time with our new baby and balance being your wife and being there for you and setting up dates and spending quality time. Like that's hard. Okay. That is hard to balance. Um, along with the fact that you don't know how you're going to feel as a mother. Once a woman has a baby, she is a completely different woman. She's all, she, she is, part of who she was before but now she has peeled back another level level of herself it's like an onion she peeled back a layer okay um because she is now a mother and she's she will always be a mother now that there's a baby here and she has to balance you guys in the mix and then sometimes on the other hand people have very drama filled relationships with their child's mother it was never a good thing i shouldn't have been talking to her it was just like this one night where we just got drunk or um we was just in the moment and we made a kid and now a kid is here and i have to figure out like how i'm going to deal with this woman for the rest of my life that i really didn't want to be around this long with that's a lot Okay, that's hard, that's stressful. Um, A lot of people hate to hear a phone ring and see a name pop up on the phone and it's the other parent to their child. But you cannot dictate, 
control or disturb a relationship with a child and that parent because of what y'all got going on with each other. That's very selfish, okay? There's a lot of parents out here disturbing the peace or the union or the bonds for other parents because they're prideful, they're in their ego, and they can't separate their emotions from what used to be, from what was, or from what is not going to be anymore, but we share a kid, okay? That is very hard, again, if you have any mentors, if you have any men that have experience with having relationships with women or having mothers of their children in different ways, ask them for the advice. Ask them, like, what would you do in this situation? What can I do? What are my, um, what are my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What are my rights as a father? with my child like what can I do what would be the best thing to do in this situation again men you need to know your parental rights in the state that you live in in the state that that woman lives as far as your child men have equal to the same rights of visitation um being able to see their child, being able to care for their child. It's just not a lot of men that will take a woman to court to see their child, be able to see their child, or stick to some form of scheduling, okay? Men, if the woman is really on a level of toxicity that you don't want to deal with, go through the court. Be the one that shows up for court first. Be the one that acts to be put on child support, here is my job, here is my information, this is the mother of my child, please make sure that I can provide. And then in some states, visitation is completely separate. Go ahead to the court and see what documents you have to file or fill out to be able to have visitation with your child. Some places have like a... Um, a mediation middle ground where you can meet drop off or visit with your child sometimes it depends on the situation okay do what's safe for you because if you're in a situation and you want to see your child and it's too much drama or it's too toxic once police are called the odds of them pulling a father away the odds of them arresting a father and the odds of them looking at the father as a bad guy are very high okay especially depending on skin color so do whatever you have to do to make sure your line of communication, bonding, emotionally, spiritually, financially, that that child knows you're there, that child knows who you are, and that child has the space to figure out who their father is. Don't let a woman, no matter who she is, dictate, disturb, or uh, remove you from the opportunity of you bonding with that child because you never know what your child will be one day. You never know how you will need a, your child. So show up. All right. Um, number nine. How can I prepare my spirit for a new child? Okay. That's very important. I'm not very religious, but I will say I am spiritual. That I will say I believe in manifesting. I believe in praying. I believe in positivity. I believe in um, karma. I believe in uh, blessings from people of your past, people that look over you. Uh, I believe that when you do good and you do right and you do good for others, your blessings always come back to you. I believe that if you do everything you're supposed to do, for your child, you do everything you can do to be able to stay in contact, communicate, and have a relationship with your child. Your child, once they grow up and can get to a position where they want to understand the whys behind the relationship, they'll be able to see that. They'll be able to understand it. And men, if you know that you have a child out there and for whatever reason you just can't, um, deal with the courts 
or you just can't put yourself in a position to have a back and forth with that child's mother and you know your child is out there existing, try to deal with that child through a family member that can have access to or can pass along um, clothing, food, uh, finances, schooling. Um, Try to do your best to write letters and date them and put them in a box. That way, if that child shows up at your doorstep at 18, you have something to show. A child doesn't want to hear 18 years later, hey, I wanted to see you, but your mom just went in. Oh, I wanted to um, talk to you, but I just didn't know what to say on the phone. No, that's not acceptable. Write your letters, date them, and put them in the box. Especially men who have daughters. Girls go through so much in life not having the proper relationship and and foundation with their father. So if you know you have a daughter out there, you do not have access to her, write to her. Write to her, give her your thoughts, put pictures in the box, and one day y'all be able to share that. And one day she'll be able to understand, hopefully, okay? Um, Just don't cancel out that opportunity. Don't cancel out the efforts, okay? Number 10, um, men should be asking themselves, how can I check my ego? A lot of relationships are ruined because men do not know how to check their ego, okay? If you suffer from anger, handle that before that child comes here. If you suffer from different triggers, go see a therapist and handle that before that child gets here. Sometimes moments can be forgiven. Sometimes they can't. We raise kids up. We can't go back. Meaning, if you lose time doing something foolish, acting out, or having a temper tantrum as an adult man, you're going to lose moments, years, and time with a child who didn't do anything to you to deserve what you did. Men, brothers, uncles, cousins, husbands, fathers, stop making your relationship with your kid right in old age. Stop being stubborn about apologizing to your child's mother about your ego-driven behavior and your pride. Stop robbing yourself out of the time to bond with the family you created and you desperately wanted. Stop leaving gaps in time out of pride. We all should have desires to give our children better parenting than our parents. So stop the cycle, men and fathers. I'm asking you to stop the cycle. Please do your work, your self-work, before your child gets here. And if for some reason you can't, or you weren't mentally ready, or you were dealing with some type of substance abuse, and now you're ready, I hope what I said can help a father. I hope what I said was honestly felt in a compassionate way. I'm not attacking you. I'm not saying that you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, but I'm saying there's so many other ways to be right. There's so other there's so many other reasons to keep trying and you should be able to think about your future in your child. Your children take care of you in old age when you do it right. Your children are there to carry on your stories, your experiences, and your parents' stories and their parents. So if you cancel out that chance for you and your child to bond, you're cutting off the chances for their children and their children to get to know who they are. It's very selfish it's a, it's a lasting long of selfishness and we have to stop it. And I just want better relationships with fathers out here for everybody. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your nationality is, but I know we all have some work to do. So um, if you know a father out there struggling with processing that they're becoming a father, 
please share. If you know there's a um, a father out there becoming a father for the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, and it just hasn't hit them yet what their responsibility is, please share. No one is excused from not doing their work. Do your work. Do your work. Thank you for listening to Cozy Womb. Peace. Yay! Bye. Bye.